Hmm? Hi guys. I just wanted to uh, quickly go over a thought that I was that I've been kind of turning over in my head a little bit over the last couple of days, and I presented it um, when I was meeting with a few people today after work, and um, this mainly goes out to people that are in recovery right now, going through recovery, um, but it can really apply to anybody. Um, and I started thinking of people in this position as. Um, and this is not really putting a spin on it at all. I'm not trying to, but um, you're really in a kind of a good position right now, really lucky position. And um, the reason I say that is because we all have, we all deal with problems in our lives. Um, we all deal with, to some degree or another, you know, feelings of inadequacy, uh, unimportance, um, embarrassments. Uh, we just general feelings of uneasiness um, and not being quite happy from time to time and that that manifests it its way I mean that manifests in different ways for different people why why I see people that are going through recovery right now as being um, being in a good position is um, whatever you did uh, if, if there was any if there was an addiction you know alcoholism anything like that that wasn't that wasn't the problem that was a symptom and um, that's how your problem manifested themselves and they like I said it it manifests differently in different people but why uh, you can't be successful in recovery unless you um, well, A, stop doing those things that your unhappiness or uneasiness manifested into. Um, but B, you can't really get it unless you've dealt with those, um, those underlying issues and, and whatever they may be. And why people that, you know, I see in meetings now, um, why I consider them lucky is they're underlying issues um, just in general with life have manifested in such a way that it was it became completely apparent to um, themselves and people around them obviously they manifested in a way that caused a pretty great disruption in their lives and the lives of people that they care about lives of people around them and you know in some cases in unlucky cases people that they don't even know but and that's the whole, you know, the first step in, in fixing a problem is admitting you have a problem. And in some people, that, that, same, that same unhappiness um, might manifest differently. And it might manifest in an action that isn't deemed, like, unacceptable by, by society. You know, maybe they become, instead of going into drugs or alcohol, they become obsessed with a sports team obsessed with um, a line of political thinking, obsessed with shopping, anything like that. And things that might not cause a severe disruption or, a, or an irregular disruption in their life. And without that, they may never kind of realize they have a problem to, to they might not realize they have a problem. So, although, you know, the actions that um, lead a lot of people to go into recovery um, tend to be, you know, they're very irregular actions and tend to produce, you know, financial trouble, trouble with the law, um, tr you know, tr tr trouble with society. They're problems that are, that become so glaringly apparent that you really have no choice but to make that decision. And when you start getting recovery, you start to tackle those underlying issues that caused the, that manifested in those actions. And that's what it's all about. So, um, like myself, there may be, and I'm still working on that. I'm still working on figuring out like the underlying reasons why I made the decisions that I made and <clears throat> whether it's a general just 
unhappiness. Maybe I, from an earlier age, expected too much out of myself. Um, and when I, when success wasn't as easily attainable as it was in younger years, depending on what I was doing, um, I think maybe the easy way out or the easy way out in social situations where I may have felt uncomfortable was get drunk. And um, now that that's removed, I, I am, you know, I need to start doing the work and dealing with those underlying issues. And a lot of times when, you know, we, th those are underlying issues that I think everybody has to some extent, but maybe it never reaches the threshold to where you think you need to change. And let me tell you, doing, reaching that threshold, you know, I've reached it a few times, but reaching that threshold and actually embracing it and learning from it, it it's been absolutely incredible. And it's something that can, you know, people, you know, you don't have to sink down that low to start benefiting, to start looking at that, at that, those possible changes to making a life and start benefiting from it. So now I'm going to start rambling because I think that that is one of the hopes of these videos and these podcasts is that if I can you know, make an example of myself in some way, shape, or form, um, even though you shouldn't need it, maybe it gives you a little bit of permission to kind of look deeper into some of the unhappiness in your life or, you know, the uneasiness. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's my hope, really. Um, I'm willing to put myself out there, maybe embarrass myself, embarrass friends and family, sorry. Um, I'm willing to do it on these terms because I've done it enough on those other terms. Well, that was just a quick thought that I had um, that if you are, especially if you are actively going through recovery right now, <clears throat> beyond the fact that you're still here with us, you're still alive to change and grow and improve, you've realized, I mean, you've realized there's a problem. And it's no different than a lot of problems that a lot of people face in the world. It just manifested in this way. But because it did, you're now at that position to be able to make a change, make a difference. So if you're watching this, obviously you're here. I'm proud of you. And I'm here too. If you have any questions or need someone to reach out to, I'm here. Thank you. Have a good night.